Bienvenue à tous pour Welcome to everyone for the interview for Brillante Mendoza's Marosa. He is back in Cannes in the official competition and with his fine cast. Hello, welcome. Thank you for being with us and welcome also to your cast. Jacqueline Jose. Hello. Hello, Jacqueline. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Please, with the mic. Hello. Votre fille qui Your daughter, Andy Engelman, is uh, who plays your daughter, is also your daughter Merci in real life. Thank you for being here. And between you, there's the policeman, Neil Ryan Bissese, and your son in the film. Joe-Marie Angeles, who, who plays uh, Andy's uh, brother and Ma Rosa's son. And this is a wonderful family, but with so much trouble. Where did, this, where did you get the inspiration for this? Do you know a family that had to sell drugs, or is this something you imagined? Well, actually, I have a personal uh, encounter with one of the characters in the film in the past. Uh, I know of, of this story about four years ago, and I tried to follow this family and uh, try to know more about what happened uh, in, in real life about this family. So that's how I came up with the idea and, and with the film. Come on, uh how did you choose the way of uh, filming, of shooting these actors? Because it's almost like a documentary of plunging into this uh, daily. Did you go there with a handheld camera? How did you go about this? Well, um, I'm quite familiar with the community. Uh, I'm, f I'm quite familiar with this kind of uh, situation and with the kind of statics and shooting style. Um, like what I did in the past, and I think uh, my actors are also familiar with my um, with my aesthetics and with my style. I asked them to do uh, an immersion. Uh, in fact, I asked Andy here to um, to do an immersion and to uh, involve herself in the community, uh, so that you know, they'll be able to learn how they speak, you know, how they interact with one another. So that's very important for me, uh, and I think it will also help them in their performances to know uh, these people, you know, by heart, not only in the superficial uh, way, you know, how they see it in the, you know, uh, from the outside, but more, uh, you know, how they really evolve and how they really interact with one another from the inside, yeah. Jacqueline José, you had already toured in Serbis. Jacqueline José, you were played in uh, Serbis when he said you went out to meet these uh, people. And you and Andy went to meet the people you were going to play in the film. Uh, how was this experience for you? Um, we usually do that. Um, Dante will, Brillante will always require us to. Uh, uh, go to these places uh, without makeup or without uh, them knowing us, but um, nevertheless, they still re um, recognize us. But mm. uh, we sneak at night time, we look at them, we watch them, we uh, simply wear regular clothes as, as, look, as natural as um, like them, and then we observe, we observe a lot. We do our um, 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 immersion, mm. and uh, yes, me and, and my daughter separately go um, to these kind of places to meet the people. Andy, you, Andy, you, well, you both of you are well-known faces in the Philippines on television and cinema, and so how was it when you met these people? What did they tell you? What did you learn about the way they live? Well, of course, it was, <laughs> it was. Um, I, I feel like it was quite a joy for them to have to have met me. But then at the same time, it was about immersing myself into getting to know them and being just like them and letting them know that it um, with these with these people in the Philippines it just takes just a, a short while for them to enjoy the moment of meeting someone 
um, famous per se. Mm. But after five minutes, it will all go away, and then they, mm. they will realize how how much more how much of humans we are, just as they are. It's more about just getting to know people from different parts of the Philippines. Mm. It's I feel like it's the same as it is anywhere else in the world when it comes to meeting people and trying to get to know how it is, how it how they how they're raised and how they've learned to live their lives. Thank you. Neil Ryan, vous avez rencontré des policiers vous? And uh, did you meet a uh, policeman? You went to a uh, police station. How did you prepare your role? Uh, same thing. We have an immersion. We had an immersion. Uh, we stayed in a police headquarters for for a day just to observe how they move, how they do their their paperwork and all the stuff that the policeman does. Yeah. On a une impression de, de, we de have a feeling of uh, uh, cinema uh, which shows reality. Are these, uh, the, the strength of your actors and the way you work is that you don't really know if they're actors or they are real people, but you also have a statement to make uh, denouncing the corruption of the police. Is this something you have experienced yourself? Well, it's not really this, the kind of the same experience that they have experienced in the film, but uh, similar to that, I think as an artist, it's important for you to not just tell a story, but to feel the story yourself. It's also important for an artist, for a filmmaker, to make a statement, you know, that in every film that you make, it's not just about the story that you tell, but how you connect with the story that you're telling. And I think that's what makes it important, and that is what that, that what makes the film significant is when you connect with it, when you feel with your story, and that goes along with the you know with the rest of the cast, with the rest of the team, for as long as you know your objective. And I think that was very clear with my staff, with my actors. You know, they know what I'm doing. They know the kind of film I am into. Um, this is not a commercial film. This is, we are not here just to entertain. No. We are here to provoke. We are here to, you know, to to have an audience with critical thinking, and I think that's the uh, that's that's the that's the main objective, you know, is is to have a discourse and also to have um, something to be bothered about, mm -hmm. you know. Cinema is not just about feeling good. Mm -hmm. Cinema is not just about, uh, you know, saying it's a good film and it's your done. You leave the cinema and you clap and you go home, you know. Cinema is about uh, when you go home, you're bothered. And, 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 and you also, uh, you know, for a while, uh, it makes you think, you know, as, as a human being. This is a, this film is a shock, it's very moving, we're very deeply touched by the uh, character and included, uh, including the uh, role of the son. What did Brillante tell you to prepare your role, to prepare you to play the scenes that you played that are not easy at all? First of all, uh, I developed the character through the immersion, same as the other mm. actors. And for the physical preparation, physical appearance of my character, I changed the color of my hair. Then I talked to uh, the some of the reference of the characters in, of the movie. And for the the scenes of the uh, hard scenes for the movie, Derek Brillante made it uh, easier for me because uh, uh, it's just a. Uh, we shoot it in a private place and not all of the staff are there, so it's, it's easier for me to be more comfortable in uh, doing the scenes. This was more reassuring for you, I imagine, because you have very private scenes. Uh, I don't want to say too much. Uh, uh, Jacqueline Rosset, when you make a film with Brillante uh, Mendoza, do you have the feeling of telling the truth about life in Manila, uh, being at the heart, at the core of what's going on in Manila? Definitely. I have to follow everything what Brillante will ask me to do. I have to, you know, sometimes as an actress, you don't want to look like the, the characters you're portraying, but with Brillante, you can't do anything but to, to obey him. <laughs> you have to wear no makeup. You have to look the, 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 the character. Yeah. 
I can't cheat. <laughs> I can't cheat. I can't even even put a little bit lipstick, lipstick or <laughs> blow, blow, blow dry my hair. I can't. I have to look the Very character, natural, yeah. the natural, mm -hmm. and I have to follow everything what will Dante, uh, Brillante will say. Mais c'est pas frustrant ça? Est-ce que. Euh, Isn't que that somewhat frustrating? That means you have to give up much more to this director, to Brillante Mendoza, than to any other director. Is that easy for you? You are an actress with an image. Can you, is it easy to do this? It's very easy because we are friends since I, we started this business. We've been here for 30 years, right? So I know Brillante so well, he knows me so well. And um, as a director, I follow him. And uh, uh, aside from that, uh, we are friends. Our, if we're not taking, uh, we are friends. But on the set, he is my boss. And uh, um, it's not frustrating. A actually, it's um, uplifting. And um, this is what I also wanted to do at uh, the rest of my other uh, 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 other. Um, uh, types of movies that I am doing mm. to at least get out of and then do yeah. the real thing, mm. what is happening around. Mm. I love what I am doing with Brilliant, and only Brilliant can do that to me. <laughs> What you do is very powerful in this film. And the last question to Brillante, you talk about the impression you want to make on the viewers. It is a shocking film. You have a new president who wants to restore the death penalty. And, uh, and uh, do you agree with these new changes? Who is the mic, please? Well, I try to, uh, I try to veer away from uh, with these political uh, issues. Uh, like, you know, ever since I've started my career as a filmmaker, I try to work as independent as I can. I think I'm saying so much already with my mm. films. I don't have to say my views about whatever, you know, the, the situation now or whatever the intention of the, the new administration now. Um, I think I'd rather, uh, you know, keep it to myself. Um, but I, I'm, I'm giving the new administration the benefit of the doubt. I think, um, like the most of the Filipinos, I, we are hopeful for the best, for the better. And I think the reason why we're doing this kind of film is this, because we want change. So uh, we have a new president now, and um, I am open for changes. And we are very open to your cinema. Congratulations to you, to your cast, to your actors, and uh, congratulations uh, to all of you, your wonderful actors, and thanks to...